Hello, this is Kathy Vick, and I want to present as me, uh, just for a little bit. I will make this as brief as I can, but I want to call this copying to it, um, because it's that's what kind of it's been, <clears throat> and um, they've been really good about playing whatever that position is in football where they go uh, uh, and push people out of the way so that the quarterback can. I don't know, prance or do whatever quarterbacks do, pick their seats. But it's been like that. It's like, she doesn't want to talk right now. And I really, totally didn't. Because I, I get embarrassed when I don't know what's going on. It, it really bothers me if I uh, feel like I'm lost or dumb. <laughs> it's my trigger. Hey, don't call me dumb. <laughs> And I really was just in a period of consolidation, and so I wanted to just say that it was really nice to have these six weeks, and I'm blessed in many ways. I've got uh, very beautiful people, um, beautiful men who are supporting me, and they love me very much, and um, they give without question, and they give um, sweetly, and, um, and they're people who are... Um, they're in the position to do so, and they do so, so lovingly. And so I appreciate that. Um, it may not have been important to them, but it was important to me these six weeks because um, through it, I was able to consolidate a lot of really, well, what I would consider ancient or old teachings, which I recognized as ancient at the time that I was receiving them in the 90s. And um, to have this amplification come through me of this group who schooled me and to understand that that's a part of me and it's just been a great gift. The whole thing's been a great gift. And um, and I share it only, it, you know, I really want it made plain that I'm not a boaster. I'm 55 years old, and I've been terrified to speak. <laughs> so I'm really not okay with being called somebody who's a braggart, because I'm just not. But when something's happened, I think it's appropriate to speak. But I'm not looking for, I mean, I, part, I was like giggling that, you know, I think that there was a part of me that just expected to have at least, I don't know, non-physical entities meet me at the at the finish line and give me some roses or something it's like wow that was quite the feat but truly last night around the fire after they had given that final message prior to the thing you do that we did they were weeping and I couldn't stop it and it was then it rea I realized that, you know, they'd been holding a lot of energy for a long time. And there was a release of sorts. Not one of uh, that was tinged in any way with sadness or with uh, fatigue or with resentment or futility or any of the things that I felt with regularity. No, it was more of just, thank God. Oh, what a relief, what a relief, what a relief. <gasps> like that. Now the night before, I want to say that I was at the fire and I told Melissa about this the next day. Maybe it was Jennifer, I don't remember, but one of them, maybe both of them, because I'm a bit of a blabbermouth. I think I've said that once or twice. So yeah, I said, geez, it's like I w you guys are poking around that fire and making it go red again. And it was like, I was just like, you guys were talking about this and that and the other thing and and all of that dialogue that used to just drag me down make me think about things that were either just unpleasant or dark or whatever it was just gone <laughs> and I kept waiting for it and just like when I first realized that I was making choices based on what choice would get me into less trouble it's like wow I was doing that and now last night it was like wow I was no the night before I was doing that it was, it was like this involuntary dark machine. And I couldn't really get away from it. It was like anybody had, to, if they mentioned one good thing, then a bad thing popped up. And if a bad thing popped up, a good thing popped up. It was like, Ugh. 
and it was just gone. <laughs> it felt really great. So um, then we did that null node thingy do, and I was just do it. Just did the channel and and uh, setting things and letting them know. It was sort of like I could feel how important it was to the group to be heard. That this is they have they hold high honor to be part of this. It's a big deal. <laughs> but today I didn't really expect you know robed non-physical entities to I don't know sprinkle rose petals on my path it wasn't it didn't have that flavor at all it was more like oh well, now I get to get to work oh I can hardly wait I'm gonna have so much fun doing this next part because I'm not scared anymore and I have some things that, and then I realize oh huh there's a couple things coming up I didn't even think about that were coming up it's gonna open up some doors in Interesting, and it, it so it's more of just wanting to engage and wanting to be uh, what do you call that? Oh, I don't know, balanced, <laughs> happy, um, a little fearless but not reckless, really responsible, though perhaps a little more magical than is to her benefit. Oh well, it doesn't seem like all that bad of a of a thing. And so it's uh, just leaving behind this idea of being in argument with my reality. This was a very hard concept to get through because there was stuff I just did not agree with, and it was core stuff, just really core issue stuff. But to truly not be in an argument anymore. And I think that maybe it's uh, one of those things that... Uh, <laughs> Miggy loves this part. <laughs> she just loves it when I'm talking like this. Um, I think it has to do with just being okay with what's riding around inside. And giving myself a freaking break for being sparkly. There's something about having um, three of my friends... And we all stood there in full acknowledgement that this was probably a pretty good idea. <laughs> it's like, what? This is phenomenal. <laughs> That's how they put me to bed that night, last night. Oh, come on, girly. Don't you understand? This bed is broken. You've been seen, baby. You've been really, really, really seen. And it's good. Go night, night now. And then I didn't sleep any. Oh my god. Oh my god. It was like ground glass to sleep. Finally I had to sleep on the couch for a while just to get comfortable with the energy. It was like, uh I can't breathe. So oh my god. Yeah, they're talking me out of smoking. Thanks a lot, guys. <laughs> Sam's going, finally, God, it's been six months, Mom. Jeez. <laughs> yeah, yeah, well, I made a promise. And I, I had a target date, but dates change, baby. So, who knows? All I know is that there's a sort of resolution to it all because I feel much more confident and much less willing to have my reality prove to me that these things are real. Imagine such a thing. Imagine. And now it's a matter of creating what I want rather than dependent I was very dependent on being on having proof of how to move forward and I think that was part of the whole switch of just saying uh, yeah I need a place at the table you need to include me I'm ready I've earned it I've earned a place at the table and I did that on the 12-12 of my, of my uh, anniversary or my whatever the thing that I celebrate on the 25th of May so whatever so whatever what the fuck ever that and 50 cents right that and 50 cents what does it matter is some old broad talking about something that doesn't matter right well I don't feel that way anymore and I totally get people who do and I totally get people who say that I'm self-indulgent or too magical or whatever, but I know what I can conjure. 
I know what time it is. And I know what I have access to. And I know I could turn it on and off like a switch. It's not even a matter of doing that. This is so it's such a blended message. So it's just sort of copying to it all. And the only thing about embodiment that's, that's tricky for me is that I really get that I'm supposed to just own this and not say them. And it does create a false sense of disembodiment or of disempowerment. Because I have conscious organic knowledge of a lot of this stuff. It's not like it's, although it can come in the wave uh, thought forms or thought constructs or whatever downloads or whatever, it turns out to be an organic experience and it can be lived linearly. And the gift of linearity is that these things can be delivered over time, understood and the understanding deepened, always leading to more trebles of just wondrous, stunning depth and significance and meaning. And um, we're not, I don't think, creating with just, you know, a couple crayons here, and I don't think that we're creating on just one level, any of us, any of us. Although it's t perfectly fine if the level is, you know, trying to figure out how you're going to pay for tuna because you've got some, you know, tuna helper left over from a couple of years ago and <laughs> you need to feed the kids. Whatever. So, you know, the idea that you are only as um, spiritually wealthy as your pocketbook is just, it is forever broken. And I can see now, and I, I really appreciate how all the good comes, and I, I get it. It has to do with worth. It has to do with being clear and not having arguments with myself anymore about who I am, how I feel, how I love, who I love, that I love. Not in argument. Mm -mm. And most of all, not arguing anymore about my own worth and my own right to have an expression that may not be the consensus reality. Because look at this, I did not have a consensus reality. But last night it came to me and I told them, you know, it's been told to me that consensus reality is a falsehood. It's a tracer and it's a conundrum. It's a tracer for a coherent reality. Coherence, not consensus, not even congruence. Coherence. That smell in the air, that thrill in your heart, that zoom in your bones, coherence and that is the inner child that is the innocence that is the purity that is your way home and if that's in argument with what you fucking do every day well then you've got a problem and that's certainly what I had <laughs> on how, how many levels <laughs> pick a level I'll tell you all about my arguments. And now it's like, okay, well, I get it. I can see why I was arguing. Holy shit. Yeah, that makes sense. <laughs> but I'm done. Because I, I, you know, it takes, it takes a bully and the bullied to have a bullying situation, just like it takes, in an argument, two opposing sides. And what have they been saying for like three weeks? There's no either or, dear. Just like, boom, there you go. Have some coffee. Don't you think you should shower? Ew. Yeah, there's no either or. Just uh, put that in your pipe and smoke it. La la la. <laughs> That's very piquant. 
And it depends on how far you want to go with that one, but um, yeah. In the end, so we were joking, all the smarty pads sitting around the table, about how funny the boson um, experiment uh, results were. Because it basically said, well, kind of depends on how you look at it, I guess. That's pretty much what it said in math. <laughs> I guess you got a choice to make, says the boson uh, solution. Because they both are equally valid choices. <laughs> guess what? That's reality creation. And what is the deciding factor? Well, I'd say that if you're here, the one hemisphere, just kind of putting along and not really thinking about anything and not really feeling much and just getting on and all that and just getting on with it and la la la. Well, then you're going to have a lot of projections of things that you're not really in a place where you're owning. And you're going to get a lot of what I would call whispers, and then pretty soon the whispers become louder voices, and then they're kind of like pretty insistent screams, and then it's the two by four. Okay, I didn't listen. And uh, sometimes free falls are not that. Free falls is when you've given intent and permission to just let the bottom fall out, because you know that it's like a, an innate death when you're the dying man on the table and you know that uh, your, your body cannot physically um, support your spirit anymore. It's just a done deal. There's a point of no return. Hospice nurses know this place well. And I think there's a point of no return in consciousness too. And what is uh, reality but the evidence of consciousness in action? Expressing. So yes, I've had the bottom fall out a few times in my reality. And it's never been nice, it's never been easy, and I have um, been working with getting to a place where I'm not getting that kind of feedback loop anymore. It's just not necessary. Just seventeen, seventeen. Not necessary anymore. I'm listening more intently now. I'm hearing it better. So I don't need to have the symbols of um, perhaps... I mean, it's still very enjoyable when my body does stuff. I dig it. Because it doesn't just stop. Oh, she's so smart. She's got it figured out so we don't have to talk to her anymore. No, it's like you get more communication. And it's more of a package deal, but it's more comfortable to just be in your body. I don't know. I'm just one person. So that's copping to it, dudes. That's what I have to say about this. I feel very hopeful. I've got um, good things planned the next couple of days, and um, and uh, I feel very hopeful and very excited and um, released in a way, just sort of um, freed. There was a lot of prison metaphor going on, toward especially toward the end. There was one called the Oak and the Ivy where there's a tendril of oak that you're in a you're a prisoner in a prison cell and uh, nothing really changes and you kind of get used to it you don't even you kind of forget that you're even a prisoner and um, you know it's just your confinement <laughs> you just find the best in every day whatever and then one night something happens and in the morning there's this tendril of oak that's kind of hanging from the corner and you go over there and scrabble on a chair and yank it down. <laughs> oh, shit. Because it smells like spring in your hands. Oh, man. Well, that shows you how hungry I was. Hmm. All right, then. <laughs> okay. And so then, you know, you just let it go. And there's not any more of that little miracle for a while. And then one night, something happens. And in the morning, there's two tendrils. They're just poking out of the crack in the cement on the other side. And then, you know, then it's this beautiful vision that they gave me. It's, oh, it's so pretty. The idea is that there's, there's stuff going on that you don't know. And that sometimes this stuff that you don't know presents itself as new growth that is either, you know, skillfully managed or unskillfully managed. 
And, you know, you can be the kind who just continues to just not let it happen. That's cool. That's fine. It's not going to stop, but you can keep doing that. Or you can let it grow. And what they showed me is that with this vision is that there finally is so much growth because the, the oak is standing there in this moonlight and then the ivy is just alive. It's just the whole tree is alive with it. And there's fingers going out. And it's like there's the runners or something. I don't know, but it's so pretty. And that's what's been, you know, basically caving in the walls from the inside out this new growth that you knew nothing of because then the wall went back up and I was a prisoner again in this cell and there was just a couple of tendrils but then the wall came down again and it's like this verdant reality that is on its way and um, it's really a matter of how much you believe that <laughs> just like the boson thing and I think it just takes a stroll through the internet now. And you may have to get used to some vocabulary that's weird. So what? So what? Didn't you have to learn a new language when you went out and learned, what, mechanic school or whatever? Didn't you? Don't you have your own language when you talk about your field of endeavor and can spout off all kinds of words that nobody else knows what they mean? And you look like a big fancy man, a big smart nurse and no it's just your language <laughs> so what's this, so a new language so what's going to hurt you but I mean if it's happening to me and I'm very loud about it and I'm presenting myself to multidimensional beings that are very good at communicating and there's other things going on where it's obvious that something's going on and it's involving more than just me well then, isn't that interesting? <laughs> and so yeah, now it's on Monday it's going to be seven weeks. <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if I'll be coming to you again. I don't know. I don't. Didn't I ever? I always said that in essays. So I don't know. I don't know what tomorrow brings. Never do. It's not. It's not for me to know. I just can. I just need to suit up and do my best. Pay attention. So, that's all I want to say. I'm going to do it one more channeling because I want the ancient one to come out. I like to play with them. They make me feel the happiest. So, that's what I'm going to ask for. And then I'm going to watch the Netflix. Go night, night. And finally get some rest, I hope. So, yeah, it's good. It's a dismissal of things that used to uh, that uh, used to just make me feel like I was being killed from the inside out, and then it was just more like this argument that just was always there: this negativity or this sadness or this sadness, this sadness, this sadness. And I think part of it's just being a nurse, to be honest with you, but. Part of it is just being a writer, too, and being willing. That's sort of been the idea. To be able to, uh, mm, I don't know, embody it so I can write about it. Whether I channel or not. What makes a good writer? And I'm not a novelist. I don't really, in, I'm not interested in fiction. I've only written one novel. Ugh. If I ever do another one, it's going to be a continuation of this... Um, odd genre that I came up with for Asperger girls. 13-year-old <laughs> Asperger girls. It makes me happy. That's all I have to say. I hope that you love me and if you don't, I hope you don't throw mud at me because I'm only trying to express myself because I love you.